Hi again, this is Pastor Jeff from Community Covenant Church in Twisp, Washington. I'm glad you're able to join me again for our Sunday message as we are continuing in our summer series about the book of Proverbs. But just as a point of introduction, I don't know if you have ever watched on YouTube some reactors, reactor channels. These are folks who either by themselves or with a, a partner or other people will watch or listen to a song that they've never heard before or watch a television show or a movie that they've never watched before and then they film their reaction to the song or the TV or movie. Um, it's a lot of fun to see them react, especially to something that you're familiar with. So, you know, one of, you know, these classic songs that they've never heard and see how they respond to songs that I know well and or a television show or a movie that I know well and love and then seeing them react. And so, for instance, you know, this gal who has her reaction thing here, she's watching Indiana Jones and and she's a very, you know, emotional, big reactor grabbing the blanket. And so it's fun to see the the scary or the surprising or the funny things and see them react. Um, they can make money. They can actually have a living if they have enough people who are watching their reactions. So YouTube has a way to get paid some monetization if you have um, so ever many crazy numbers of followers. But there's another site called Patreon where you can solicit people to become your patron for different levels. And some are like, you know, you pay a dollar a month and some of them, you know, they increase the amount and you get something more, you early access or add their perks. And, um, so out of curiosity, I was looking at this, this couple down here in the lower corner are from Australia. And I went to the site Patreon to see how many people they have as their patrons and their tier that are listed there. They only have, um, their lowest tier is $6 a month and they have, um, I don't know, a couple thousand. So I did the math and if, and knowing that they have some people who pay more, but even at that lowest tier of $6 a month, I figured out that they make at least $21,600 every month just from these people who are paying to get access to their content. And I was like, holy moly, maybe I should, you know, do that instead of being a pastor. But of course, you know, it seems easy. It seems like what a great way to make a living by just watching movies and having people pay to watch you watch movies. But it's a lot of work. I think that this idea of becoming an influencer as your career is something that's really attractive, especially to young people who have grown up with these influencers on YouTube and wherever. And they go, well, I'd like to be like that famous person and make a living by just doing these fun things. But it is still work. And work is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, as we go through the book of Proverbs in our series, Proverbs are more than just a fortune cookie fortune. They are the ways that God wants to convey his wisdom to us. Fortunes are for fools. Proverbs are for the wise. God's wisdom being given to us. So today we're talking about work, like I just mentioned. What wisdom does Pro the book of Proverbs have for us in relation to our work? Well, one of those Proverbs is Proverbs 12, 11, that says, A hard worker has plenty of food, but a person who chases fantasies has no sense. We look at that and we go, well, yes, of course that's wise. You know, you work hard, you're going to have what you need. But if you're just kind of floating around, you're going to be messed up. Another proverb that's almost the same words is Proverbs 28, 11, where it says, A hard worker has plenty of food, same line, but a person who chases fantasies ends up in poverty. Again, the same kind of message here. But this is the truth that um, Solomon and the other people who wrote Proverbs were sharing. Here's this one from Proverbs 16, 3. As a warning, it says, commit your actions or your work to the Lord and your plans will succeed. So if I'm strategizing and I want to have success, then I need to commit what I'm doing to God and trust in his leading and guidance. Our commitment to work is likely to result in success and the provision of what we need. And while we 
lack, have a lack of hard work, then the opposite is going to be true. Now, remember, proverbs are not, are simply probabilities. They're not promises. So these applications, so just in this one, you know, you commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Well, probably, but obviously there are exceptions. So these proverbs are simply saying, hey, go with what is most likely to happen. Take the whole of life and do what is most likely going to result in positive things. And that's what these proverbs are sharing wisdom of what we should do. Work is something that was God's idea from the very beginning. You ever think about that? He modeled work for us right from the beginning of the Bible in the story of creation. In Genesis chapter 2, we read, So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work. God worked. He created. That was work. The work of creation, so he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day when he rested from all his work of creation. Now, did God sweat and strain to do the creation? Well, we don't really know. My suspicion would be no. But work is more than just having you know sore muscles after you do this. Work is about what we take action to do things. And so it fills a lot of different things. And in Genesis um, 2, verse 15, it says, The Lord placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. So God did the work of creation. And then with Adam, he put him right in this place where Adam could do work himself. In this case, it was tending, watching over the garden of Eden. From the beginning, God gave Adam work to do. And this, this idea of work was never designed as a punishment, which unfortunately we kind of think sometimes, but work was given by God as a meaningful purpose that he's given us to do for our sake, but also as a way to honor God. Work provides this opportunity for humans to have the sense of purpose and accomplishment. Think about all the different kinds of work that people, that you do, that people around us do. And even from childhood, um, we long for the reward of work. Kids are excited to create. And that's what, it's work. It, it's maybe not hard labor, laborious, but kids love with, we do with Play-Doh or blocks or create art. This is creation. It is work. And it may be, again, it's not like sore muscles from it, but it is the work of creation and doing things like this. And I know kids are thrilled when they get the opportunity, like, oh, I can help. And so I, they want to jump in and help cooking or they want to help with whatever project dad's working on. Work provides for our needs, that's true. But it also gives us this sense of value. And we have pride as we accomplish things. Some jobs um, don't always end with a finished project. Um, something that gets to this end result. Um, for instance, my work as a pastor doesn't always have a finished thing. Yeah, okay, so I, I prepare a sermon, I deliver a sermon, then I can sort of say, okay, that's finished, and I can say, okay, I can have this sense of accomplishment there. And sometimes, you know, I'm doing projects, like I'm taking um, a group of students and a few other adults to this conference, Unite Conference, in a few weeks. That will be a sense of like, oh, we did it and we got through and nobody died and everything was great. Um, and that could be a sense of completion. But so often in my work, there's not a real completion point. In fact, um, one of my pastor friends told me that every so often he will go and paint a Sunday school room, whether it needs it or not, just so he can step back and say, oh, I did it. I finished, unlike the rest of my work. So I don't know what your job, what your work is like. If you have this, these clear things where, okay, I did it, I'm done. And you can say it's finished. You know, even for those of you who are retired, you may not be um, doing something to receive a paycheck, but you can only lounge around for so long. And, and, you know, frankly, the idea of retirement isn't found in scripture. 
So there's a value that we find in doing stuff. We still want to have a purpose, even if it's just doing a hobby or doing something that we're just having fun doing. This is a value and it's something that God has placed in all of us. We need to be active. We need to be creative. We need to be um, accomplishing things. I find it interesting to look at the original languages of Scripture. And in this case, it's Hebrew. The, the thing is that in Scripture, too often, when, in, when it's translated to English, English is not precise enough. That's why we have all these different English translations that use different words and phrasing to try to convey what was the original language. In this case of Hebrew, when it, we're talking about this word that is translated work in these, these cases, is avodah. But interestingly enough, this word avodah has multiple different meanings. The meanings include work, but also worship and service. Now, how strange and surprising is that for us to think that the same word means work, but also means worship or service? How can that be? In our Western mind, these things don't connect. Unless you're like a pastor or a missionary, then I guess you could say, okay, work and worship can, can connect there. But we see work as our secular life. Here I am Monday through Friday doing my job. It's just what I'm doing. It is something that I'm doing with a reward that would be, you know, make some money. Maybe I have increased influence. I can rise up in power and position within the company. But, you know, as we seek after our money and more raises and things like that or moving up rank, um, there are a lot of people that I've talked to who say, look, at I've achieved all those things, but I still have this kind of emptiness in me. There's not really a satisfying significance that I, that I really feel in the core of who I am. Many young people, as a result nowadays, that I talk to are like, I don't want to just do a job. I want to do a job that has significance, that has, gives me a sense of purpose, something that is is a impact and meaningful. Um, the key here to find this meaning is to embrace this concept of avodah. This word is used 289 times in the Old Testament. And in some cases, it's translated as work, sometimes serve, sometimes worship. So some verses in which Avodah is translated as work in English um, relate to the act of like cultivating a field or doing some common labor. Um, so like in Genesis um, chapter 2, verse 15, where God gives Adam this text, this uh, job, this work to tend the Garden of Eden. Or, like in the Ten Commandments, where God says, you have six days each week for your ordinary work, but on the seventh day, you must stop working even during the season of plowing and harvest. Or another verse here where it's talking about worship as opposed to work is Proverbs 8.1. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, go, or it's actually Exodus 8.1, um, go back to Pharaoh and announce to him, this is what the Lord says. Let my people go so they can worship. Again, the same word, avodah, so they can worship me. God's intention that he placed into the mind and heart of his people, the Jewish people, was that they would connect in a holistic kind of way, this integrated view of life and their relationship with God. That working and worship are not separated. It's not secular and sacred. It's working together in realizing that our calling, our job, is the same word for worshiping the Lord. So God put this concept from the very beginning in the Israelites that work is worship, that worship is our work, that work, seeing work as worship is a full idea and perspective that reflects what God's values are. The Israelites understood this way of honoring God through our work was just as value as going to the temple and praying. Worship is everything we do. 
whether it's, you know, doing a job or doing a hobby, um, being creative, sweating in the toiling things, it is all related to our relationship with God. Um, it's not just about working for your boss. It is ultimately an act of worshiping the Lord. It's not just doing some project around the house of gardening or creating something or doing something for your family. This is also an act of worship. It's tied to the great commandment or the main thing, as we've talked about before. In Mark 12, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. These are the main thing that God wants us to focus on. Loving God with all we are and then sharing that love with other people. It is an act of worship as we do these things. But all that we do is tied to this concept of our relationship with God and loving him. We're called to honor God in our heart, soul, mind, and strength as well as loving others around. And all of this is about action. How do you love God if you're not acting in some way? How do you love others if you're not acting in some way? So this is work. I do this work to love God. I do this work to love other people. And it's a way that we can worship God. In Romans 12, 1, Paul writes, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. So I'm giving all that I am to God as a way to worship. So that I'm, as I'm doing chores around the house, I can worship God. As I'm volunteering in the community, I am worshiping God. As I do my job that I get paid for and get overseen by my boss, I am also worshiping God in that kind of way too. I like how Eugene Peterson paraphrases this same verse. He says, take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place before God as an offering. So everything about my life is an offering to God, an act of worshiping him. It is building my life around my attitude and relationship with God. So the clear message of scripture is that everything we do is an opportunity to worship, to bring glory to God. God created us to work. He put that in us to create and to act, not just for the benefit of ourselves or our families, but also for other people. It's an act of worship, benefiting God, for him to ex experience our love for him as we do these things in honoring God and valuing him in our life. So we build things, we grow things, we create things, we manage things, and all of that is reflecting who God has made us to be and as an act of gratitude to God. We're reflecting his image. It's like, you know, the phrase like father, like son or daughter. It's the same thing. When we work, we're honoring God, but we're also reflecting part of God's nature. He is a creator. He does work in our lives and on behalf of us and all around us all the time. And so we're able to do this. We bring him great joy when he sees us honoring him through the things that we do and having that attitude. It's just like when we see our kids achieving things, building, creating things. We have great pride in that and we appreciate that. I think God has that same attitude towards us. Worship is not only for Sunday, but it's also for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This is an opportunity to worship God in all that we do. It's not limited to religious meetings or the time, you know, you're watching this or you come to church in a building or like in the upcoming Riding High evangelistic thing, then that's worship. As Todd is working to tame, you know, tame this horse and get it broken to be able to ride, that's work. But it is act of worship because all we do is given to God with that attitude. So your challenge that I'm putting out here, my challenge, is to adjust our mindset in this coming week and into the future where we view our job 
as not just a way to make money, not just a way to survive and provide for our family, but as a way to worship God. It may be crazy, depending on what your job category is, but what we do is an act of worship. Think about that. Be in a continual, probably internal, conversation with God, of God, what do you want me to notice? Who do you want me to notice? What do you want me to do here? How can I do these things in a way to honor you? Um, ask him what he wants you to know. Ask him what he wants you to, how he wants you to interact with people on the job. And recognize how he is enabling you to do what you're doing. And give him glory and thanks. How he's using you in your, in your job. It's not just a secular job. This is an act of worship to God too. And it's the same challenge for those of you who may be retired or you're not in an employment situation. But receive the same idea that as you're doing work around the house, as you are doing your hobby and your interests, that this is an opportunity to live in a worshiping kind of relationship, serving God. Your volunteer activities are also God working in you, God working through you. Treat those as the chances to really be honoring God and worshiping him. Um, I'm going to share uh, a little thing. Hopefully they won't mind, but a couple of guys from, from our church were working on a project around the, around the church and uh, something that was going to help one of our handicapped folks to be able to easily get in and out of the building by adding some sidewalk area. And as they were doing that work the other day, they were singing praise songs. <laughs> it was literally worshiping as they worked. Were they getting paid? No. They were treating that, though, as a thing they could do in their honor of God in the same way. How awesome if we could take that same kind of attitude. How will this perspective change how you work? How will this change your attitude and your effort, knowing I'm doing this for God? This is my act of worship. How might God use us in new ways to bring his love and his presence to those around us as we are doing things because our work is worship. Let's pray. God, thank you for your love. Thank you that you are with us. Thank you that you are within us and you are using us in everything we do. It is an opportunity to demonstrate our love for you and to worship you through our hard labor, through our creativity, through our managing, through whatever it is that we're doing. This is an act of worship. God, help us to adjust our mindset so that you're able to do great things in us and through us, even when we previously thought about it just as secular, disconnected from you. God, all of our life is connected to you in our relationship with you. So we pray that we would bring you on the job and worship you on the job. And we praise and thank you in advance for all that you're going to accomplish in and through us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, God bless you as you have your work worship in this coming week. And I want to challenge you to do just that. This coming Sunday, we won't be, I won't have this regular um, recording. Um, although, maybe what I'll do is do a little mini version. Because our, our service is actually going to be different um, next week. It's going to be an opportunity to actually... Um, process some of these thoughts um, among ourselves as we have some discussion um, about how do we really put this into practice. Um, and so maybe I will um, create a little short video where you can start to discuss and contemplate this topic in your own life a little bit more. But in the meantime, God bless you as you worship God in all and everything that you do. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.